It was a political compromise. In order to get the sexual orientation written into the Act, that this was the political compromise, that this section would be inserted to satisfy what some other members of the caucus wish to have. Okay, that's what I'm told. We have lots of opportunity for others to talk about this. Wow. It goes on, and in Section 2, it talks about um, if where a teacher or other person providing instruction, teaching a course of study or educational program, or using the instructional materials referred to in the previous section, receives a written request signed by a parent or guardian of a student that the student be excluded from the instruction, course of study, educational program, or use of instructional materials, the teacher or other person shall, in accordance with the request and without academic penalty, permit the student to, and it goes on to say, basically, either leave the classroom uh, or give, be given something else to do while they sit in the class. So the problem that arises out of this is what do you do about teaching and instructional opportunities, what they call teachable moments, um, opportunities that arise in the normal give and take of a classroom day? Um, what is the teacher supposed to do? Do they stop teaching completely, not take advantage of the opportunity to explore something, a particular issue, because it might be interpreted by some parent or guardian as being a subject matter that is dealing explicitly with religion, sexuality, or sexual orientation. How do you make that call in the middle of your teaching day? And alternatively, the teachers under the School Act are actually given instructions about how to engage students uh, and to take uh, that opportunity um, to um, seize upon those opportunities uh, to find a way um, uh, to help students um, come to, uh, and I'm going to quote here, um, it's, uh, this is from the Sheldon Schumer, uh, Sheldon Schumer um, document, but it's um, uh, quoting Article 26 sub 2, stipulates that education is to promote understanding, tolerance, and friendship among all nations, racial, or, or religious groups. They say, it's difficult to see how withdrawing children from material which one religious group finds objectionable gives those students the tools to come to understand, tolerate, or find friendship with people who differ from them on religious or other grounds. Excellent point. Um, so there's being a situation created with this legislation that one puts a tremendous burden on the teacher in the classroom, um, uh, avoids opportunities that are um, amazing opportunities to teach students how to move forward in our increasingly diverse world. And further to that, uh, following up on my questions to the minister, a number of questions in question period in this house, um, it's clear that that section um, can be used by parents and guardians to bring a human rights case against a teacher, a school, a principal, a school board, uh, uh, based on uh, uh, the, the situation that's described there. So now we have the situation, how, how about that for putting a chill uh, on, on instruction and on a teacher? Who would pay um, for the legal fees? Well, it's a good question about, uh, you know, human rights is not uh, um, a, a simple uh, process anymore. It's quite complex. Um, you do end up with both sides often uh, incurring a number of fees, including legal fees. So what kind of a chill do we put on our teachers to say, well, be careful. Anytime anything that comes up that could be construed as being explicitly religious, um, sexual, or around sexual orientation, don't go there. Um, or you could get uh, brought up before a human rights, uh, have a human rights case brought against you, which will cost you time and money. And when I tried to press the, uh, the minister responsible and say, okay, well, if you're so sure this isn't going to happen, are you going to pick up the legal fees for any teacher that this happens to? Oh, well, it's not going to happen, he says. So this is part of the, I hope, unintended consequences, but I suspect intended consequences of what's uh, in Section 11.1. Uh, so, the, and the, certainly the school boards have uh, um, reacted uh, fairly vehemently uh, around that and there has been uh, media releases, uh, joint media releases from the Alberta School Board Association, um, the uh, uh, Alberta Teachers Association, I'm sorry I don't even know all these initials here, um, College of Alberta School Superintendents uh, and the um, 
uh, Alberta School Councils Association. And they are uh, talking about the chilling effect that legislation will have in the, in the classrooms. Um, the onus on the school to now uh, send out uh, even more notification about uh, to parents of how and when a controversial issue might be caught up. But isn't that exactly what we need? When there's a controversial issue, don't we need all of those students to be talking and thinking about this so they come to some kind of understanding about the society that we have? Uh, and that we can move forward in. The government has spent, I don't know how much, $25 million rebranding this province's image, and I'm constantly being told it's all about Alberta's diversity. Really? Well, I guess it's about Alberta's diversity, but minus anything that might have to do uh, with a subject matter that's explicitly religious, sexual, or around sexual orientation. How is that more diverse? How is that moving forward? In, the twi you know, in this new millennium of ours. It's not. It's taking us backwards. So for some reason, this caucus has decided on a political compromise that is literally one step forward and at least one step back. And I think many will argue more than one step back. So obviously, I don't approve of that section. Um, and there's a lot of information that is out there now, and I really encourage people that are listening to this on the video streaming or um, reading Hansard to uh, follow up with this. But a couple of other points I want to make before my time is over here. A couple of other things that were not included in this that I think should have been. Um, one of the issues is there's no mention of gender identity. Um, and, and the definition of that and the understanding of where gender identity sits in our, uh, in our culture uh, is a complex one, and it's hard for some people to deal with, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't deal with it. We should. Um, and we've just had a gender reassignment surgery has been, uh, the, the funding for that has now been cut uh, by the Minister of Health. Um, so there's even uh, less support and understanding. And, and maybe these two things are linked and are consequential or sequential. Um, uh, and, uh, and our deliberate actions by the government, uh, I don't know. Um, but we have no recognition of gender identity in this act. And I think this was an opportunity to add it in, uh, and it should, it should be added in. We don't get these human rights acts opened up very often, and we should do the right work when we have the opportunity. The Sheldon Schumer uh, Foundation had recommended uh, as well, and I'll just read their recommendation 12, uh, they recommend that Aboriginal heritage be added as an expressly illegal ground of discrimination in the Alberta human rights legislation. And they uh, develop a very solid argument about that appearing on pages uh, 29 and 30 um, of the document that they released toward equal opportunity for all Albertans, recommendations for improvement of the Alberta Human Rights Commission. The other um, issue that was not including, and I think should have been, is the, is the concept of workplace bullying. Um, the government seemed to have had a fairly um, a firm grasp of childhood bullying, schoolyard bullying, but the concepts are the same. They're just happening between older groups of people. Uh, and they, they have programs that they run in their children's services section. They had a whole um, a summit or one of those things they have, a round table, a summit, a forum, a consultation, a consultation stakeholder, something or another that was um, chaired by the now Minister of Finance, then Minister of Children's Services, which was an excellent uh, and very far-ranging uh, exploration of the issues that are affecting children, especially around violence. And bullying is considered uh, an issue of violence, especially for children. So here we have an opportunity to add that into the Human Rights Act, and I get a lot of complaints in my office around that issue, and there is no mechanism for people to take an issue like the, a workplace bullying issue to the Human Rights Commission because it's not protected grounds. Uh, and also a very curious, suggested by uh, Sheldon Schumer again, and not in this act, and I'm looking forward to the debate from uh, government members as to why that choice was made, um, but the recommendation that we revert to the 1996 wording around uh, uh, hate propaganda uh, and dissemination of, of material that um, uh, encourages or may incite hatred to do, towards an identifiable group was not put into this legislation. Uh, and I'm, I'm very interested to hear why the choice was made not to do that, because I'll tell you the media and a number of others strongly encouraged it. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to a vigorous debate.